The film starts with a cheerful girl named Ine, who is excitedly recording her YouTube review video. She has a channel where she reviews anything and everything. This day, however, she introduces her viewers to her wall of debt, totaling 500,000 baht, and shares that despite a year of payments, she still has four more years to go. She funnily comments that being in debt is like being married to poverty. Once you are in, you have got no choice but to manage and live together. After settling her monthly debt and rent, she finds herself with little for daily expenses. To cut costs, she resorts to penny-pinching tactics, ironing clothes at work, snagging toilet paper from mall restrooms, opting for minimal makeup, and subsisting on a diet of bananas. The one about the diet seems a little over-exaggerated though. Anyway, she tries to gain her viewers' sympathy with her sob stories. As the video ends, she makes sure to advertise her number, in case someone wants to donate her some money or hire her for a reviewing job. The next ordinary day, Inna glances at her debt wall before heading to her job as a loans clerk. After grabbing a couple of bananas for breakfast, she heads out. Guess it wasn't an exaggeration after all. Coincidentally, at work, she encounters her former high school teacher, Miss Nanganuch. During consultation, it turns out that her teacher has fallen behind on loan payments due to losses from a failed side business selling beauty products. The woman tries to sway her student into giving her extra time for repayment, but it is not in Anna's hand to do so. Unmoved, Anna notifies Miss Nanganuch that her car will be repossessed if she doesn't catch up on payments by month's end. In the midst of their conversation, Anna's phone buzzes with an incoming call from an unknown number. Seizing this moment, the teacher flees without any further notice. Anna hurriedly rushes after her, but the woman quickly rushes away, despite one of her loafers falling off behind her. Defeated, Anna sighs and comes back in, while conversing on the phone. The man on the other side of the phone introduces himself as a member of the tax department named Witch IQ and Cow. He asks Anna if she is accepting donations on her YouTube channel. He even asks her to look up the number online and verify his identity, if she is suspicious. However, in reality, he is someone named Tower, a skilled con artist. Tower, who's been keeping tabs on Anna's YouTube journey without subscribing, begins his deceptive ploy. He is posing as a generous donor for Anna's channel, spinning tales about being from the tax office and promising her a hefty sum. As Anna checks the number on the internet, she comes across the info he provided and buys his story. He says that they will transfer 55,000 baht to her account. However, when Anna checks her bank account, she discovers only a fraction of what Tower promised. Tower swiftly concocts another lie, claiming that the full donation can't be released until Anna pays a withholding tax. Excitedly, Anna navigates to her banking app to comply, only to find it frustratingly unresponsive. It seems her internet package has run out. Undeterred, she rushes to the nearest ATM, eager to complete the payment. However, as she's about to authorize the transaction, a glaring detail catches her eye. The payment recipient is at the tax office, but an unknown individual. Suddenly a wave of suspicion washes over Ine, prompting her to halt the payment just in the nick of time. Soon she realizes that she is being ensnared in a scam. With a quick cancellation, Ina dodges what could have been a costly mistake. Nobody can scam Ine, who keeps track of her every single penny. Determined to catch the scammer red-handed, Ina takes decisive action. With Tower still on the line, she slyly activates her phone's voice recording feature, all while enlisting her colleague's help to trace the call. To Anna's relief, her colleague swiftly traces Tower's identification, displaying his ID on the screen faster than a seasoned FBI agent. In a bold move, Anna confronts Tower, exposing his deceitful scheme. The exchange quickly escalates into a heated argument as Anna refuses to back down. The man tells her that he has even scammed a police officer's wife, what can she, a mere YouTuber, do? Angry, with a hint of sarcasm, she remarks on Tower's features, calling his bushy eyebrows resembling caterpillars. She tells him his full name along with his address, and threatens that she is going to leak his voice clip so that he would be famous all around on TV and social media. After that, he wouldn't dare scam anyone else. The man finally shuts his trap. Realization dawns on him that his identity has been exposed, and he curses under his breath, probably dreading his decision to ever try and scam this foxy girl. Poor man even lost his 500 baht. In a bid to silence Anae, Tower calls her again and asks her not to hang up. He attempts to bribe her, offering to cover two months' worth of her debt installments in exchange for deleting the incriminating voice recording. Negotiations ensue, and the two agree to meet face to face the following day. The next day arrives, marking the pivotal meeting between Inna and Tower at a bustling public venue. On the call, Tower mentions that he is waiting in a white car on her right. Inna sees him, but refuses to board his car. She tells him to come outside so they can talk, while also making sure to check if he has any weapons on him. Once united, the two talk about their deal. Inna refuses to take his money, but instead lays out a bold proposal to Tower. She tells him that if he will help her recover funds swindled from her, then she will make sure to delete the recording. It turns out that her deceitful ex-boyfriend named Petch scammed her. 
Anna then recounts her ill-fated romance with Petch, a charming but deceitful character she met during her days as a banker. They met through a dating app, and soon the woman fell in love with the boy. Entranced by his promises, she lent him money under the guise of covering his school expenses, which he soon repaid. However, later, in a misguided attempt to assist him, Anna even took out a bank loan. She lent him a hefty sum of 500,000 baht. This decision ultimately led to her accumulating the burdensome debt showcased on her infamous wall. However, Petch's true intentions emerged as he callously ended their relationship, leaving Anna not only heartbroken, but saddled with the weight of the bank debt. Touched by her sad story and also to save his ass, Tower agrees to aid Anna in her plan to scam back her money. After telling this story, Anna takes the Tower to the place where Petch currently works. It turns out to be a touring company. Petch is currently leeching off of the owner, his newfound sugar mommy. He even holds a managerial position, enjoying the comforts of his new lifestyle at poor Anna's expense. There they find Petch, who has just come out of the building. Seeing her ex, Anna rushes to hide inside the car. As Tower watches, he finds the boy wearing lavish brands from head to toe. Keeping an eye on Petch, Tower reveals a surprising talent. He can read lips. He then tells Anna that he will do the work, but she needs to delete the recording first. The woman shows him her phone and deletes the recording before him. The heartbroken woman then asks the boy what he thinks about Petch, and if the boy really only meant to scam her from the start. Tower, who just caught Petch using the same sweet talk he used on Anna, merely repeats his words, thus confirming his intentions to cheat her from the start. Anna refuses to believe, and tries to test Tower's skills despite herself. After confirming his expertise, with a heavy heart, she accepts defeat. Tower then drops in a home and texts her that he is thinking of a flawless plan. The next day they meet again, and Tower suggests his plan on how to get Anna's money back. Since Petch works at a travel company, they'll trick the man into booking a hotel room through them. They'll then pretend to be hotel staff to collect the money from Petch, making him think it's for booking the rooms. Anna is skeptical about the plan, and wonders if the boy would fall for their tricks, since he himself is working in the Turing business. However, Tower tells her that since he knows these things, they will use his knowledge against him. They decide to choose Le Grand Hotel for their plan. In disguise as travel agents to survey the hotel, Inna and Tower meet with Sam, the head of sales at the hotel. After the introductions, Sam takes the two inside to tell them about all the kinds of facilities that their hotel offers. After getting to know that their executive rooms are the most expensive ones, Tower asks him for the rates, and the man goes to fetch the documents for detailed rates and discounts. After collecting all the data that they need, the two get up to leave. Sam escorts them to the exit. On the way, Tower asks if he knows Petch, and the man begins praising the man. He says that Petch brings them so many customers, and even gives him tours for free. Hearing this, Tower offers Sam a free trip to Russia to see the Northern Lights. Since Sam knows Petch, they need to get him out of the country. Their plan is to trick Petch into booking the hotel rooms, and then collect the money from him. Tower aims to scam Petch for 3 million baht, and knows they'll need more help for doing so. This idea doesn't sit well with Ine, who tells him that they only agree to take back 500,000 baht, questioning why they are adding the rest of the money on top of it. Hearing this, the boy tells him that he isn't going to scam for free, and the other people that they need to hire will also require a fee. Inna warns him that he shouldn't do as he pleases since she didn't actually delete the recording. However, it turns out, Tower already anticipated her sneaky move and while she was asleep, deleted it himself. The woman sighs in defeat and plops down, calling herself a bad woman, as bad as the scammer. Before she can get any more depressed, Tower quickly sways her, saying that conning a bad man is not bad he should get a taste of his own medicine. Shortly after, they approach and recruit an A's teacher, who happens to be proficient in Chinese, to pretend to be the CEO of a Chinese beer company. Teacher will seduce Petch, making him think she's a wealthy cougar. Tower arranges a business meeting with Petch. He meticulously creates a business email and contacts the man to arrange a meet-up with him and the teacher at a Bangkok office building. They decide to use the lobby in order to make it look like they own the building. There, he and Anna stealthily observe the meetup from a distance. During the meeting, Petch informs teacher that according to her secretary, he needs to reserve 30 rooms at Le Grand Hotel. She explains that her research and development team from China, working on a new beer formula, will be arriving to inspect Thai rice. During their conversation, an unfortunate mishap happens. A genuine company employee gets accidentally tripped by teacher, causing him to spill coffee on his shirt. The employee becomes irate, directing his anger towards the woman. Patch, taken aback by the employee's audacity to confront his boss, grows suspicious. However, teacher quickly employs her skills as a former high school teacher, diffusing the situation and even managing to discipline the employee. After this sudden close call, Petch continues their meeting and suggests hotels to teacher. After hearing the names, the woman insists on Le Grand Hotel, emphasizing her desire to provide exceptional care for her team. Then their scheme goes according to plan, and she requests Petch's phone to calculate the exchange rate for the hotel bill. As she gets a hold of his phone, she gives the two observers a signal, and they move to action. 
To create a diversion, Inna deliberately moves in front of Petch, catching his attention. As Petch approaches her, questioning her presence, Tower seizes the opportunity to swipe Petch's phone unnoticed. On one side, Inna, who has created a fake bruise on her face and who wants to steal more time, tells Petch how her current boyfriend Annoyed, the man asks who her boyfriend is, and Inna replies that he is, Vin Diesel the Rock Cena McGregor. That's more than one actually. While on the other side, their plan hits a snag when Petch's phone locks accidentally. Yet, Tower skillfully unlocks the device and swiftly changes Sam's phone number without raising suspicion. Before he has a chance to return the phone to teacher, Petch comes back. In a desperate attempt, Inna creates yet another distraction, and thus Tower discreetly returns the phone to its owner. Taking on the guise of Sam, Tower sends a text to Petch, informing him of a sudden seminar and assigning a substitute salesman to handle his inquiries. Falling for the ruse, Petch begins to flirt with the teacher, signaling their planned success. After happily ensnaring the boy in their trap, Tower comes outside to find a sentimental Inna. The woman looks extremely trashed with ripped pants. In an attempt to cheer her up, he distracts her with jokes, which quickly work. That night, Inna has a change of heart regarding Tower, and changes his name from Parasite. On the other hand, Petch sends flirty messages to Teacher, and they fool around with the unsuspecting guy. Just then, Inna gets a call from her mother, who reminds her to keep track of her money that she lent to Petch. She tells her to make sure the repayments are on time so that the bank does not usurp her land. It turns out, the woman is unaware of the fact that the lover boy already scammed her daughter long ago. Tower, who is sleeping in his car nearby, happens to overhear this conversation, yet he decides to turn a blind eye so that Inna does not become uncomfortable. Afterwards, they go to eat dinner and spend time together. With the passage of time, the two grow closer. The next day, the newest addition to their team, Jones, enters, poised to play the role of the salesman. He turns out to be Tower's brother. With everything falling into place, Jones prepares to meet Petch, ready to seal the deal regarding the booking of the hotel rooms. As Jones ventures to meet Petch at his office, he offers the quote for the hotel room booking. Despite not spending his own money, Petch expresses discontent over the quoted price and requests a discount from Jones. Offering a token reduction, Jones's attempt falls flat as Petch adamantly refuses, threatening to seek alternatives. Thinking quickly, Jones feigns a call to his supposed superiors to negotiate the discount. Returning to Petch, Jones proposes a deal. The rooms are available at the discounted rate, but Petch must pay a hefty sum of 3 million baht in cash. Petch, swayed by the allure of the discounted price, agrees to the terms. Afterwards, the group rests for the day, having lunch and enjoying each other's company. Inna and Tower cheerfully converse with each other. The man tells him different stories of his previous deeds, and how one time, he was arrested too. Later, they all gather and proceed with the plan. Teacher contacts Petch for an update on the hotel booking. Pleased with the news, Petch eagerly seeks payment from Teacher. However, Teacher explains that her company is closed for the holidays. She says that she'll pay him back after the New Year holiday, so he should go ahead and pay in advance. She will return it to him afterwards. The cautious man is skeptical after hearing this, and says that his company does not offer this advance payment system. He will deal with his company and delay the payment. To reassure Petch, Teacher proposes using her own funds to cover a 1 million baht deposit, requesting Petch to settle the remaining 2 million baht directly with the hotel. After some persuasion, Petch agrees to the teacher's proposal. To gather the 1 million baht needed for the deposit, Tower devises a cashier's check scam. Using his car as collateral, they acquire a cashier's check worth 1 million baht. Teacher then sends a snapshot of the check to Petch, scheduling a meeting for the following day to hand it over. In preparation for the meeting, Tower advises Teacher to feign forgetfulness regarding the check, ensuring Petch can't deposit it immediately. Tower assures Teacher that even if Petch contacts the bank, they'll confirm the check's issuance, buying them additional time. The next day, Petch eagerly awaits Teacher's arrival at the airport, with a bouquet of flowers and a bid to woo his potential sugar mommy. However, Teacher delivers the news that she's forgotten the check, much to Petch's frustration. Then, going according to plan, she insists on urgency and asks Petch to make the payment for the hotel that very afternoon. She also assures Petch that her secretary will dispatch the check to his office the next day. The man agrees to pay, but as expected, he remains skeptical and promptly calls the bank to verify the check's issuance. The bank confirms the check's validity, granting the group a crucial extension. They book a hotel room and rest after the tense encounter. Amidst their peaceful moment, all of a sudden, Tower receives unsettling news. It turns out that Sam's girlfriend has gotten injured and they are now returning back to Thailand. This sudden news makes them tense, as they wonder how to rush ahead with the plan. With little room for error, Jones takes on the task of collecting payment from Petch at his office. However, instead of remitting the full 3 million baht, Petch hands over only 1 million baht as a deposit, citing payment of the balance upon receipt from his client. Caught in a bind, Jones reluctantly accepts the 1 million baht, later consulting Tower on whether to settle for the amount or persevere with the scam. 
The situation takes a dire turn as Tower and Jones, driven by self-interest, opt to betray Inna and Teacher, each making off with their share of the money. That evening, Inna and Teacher anxiously await Tower and Jones's arrival at a restaurant to celebrate their apparent victory. However, as time passes without their appearance, the grim realization dawns on them. They realize soon that they've been betrayed. Yet, plagued by guilt, Tower resolves to make amends. That night, while a heartbroken Inna is making another one of her YouTube videos, the door to their sweet creaks open. Tower silently enters, seeking out Inna. The woman remains quiet as he creeps in and takes out a drink from the fridge. He makes an excuse that since he drove slowly, he reached here just now. Sensing the atmosphere, he turns on the lights and finds the woman crying. Tears stream down her face as she tells him that she is not hurt or anything. Her miserable lies make the man's guilt turn worse. The woman's tear-streaked face pierces his heart, and he asks her to stop crying and focus on her mother's land that she needs to protect. He says that the man only paid one million. He then proposes a new plan to scan the remaining two million bought from Petch. Despite Inay's lingering distrust, she reluctantly agrees to collaborate with Tower once more, but only under one condition. She will be the one safekeeping the money, so that there are no further betrayals. With newfound determination and a cautious alliance, they set out to execute their new scheme. On the other hand, Sam also arrives back in Thailand. Tower informs his brother that there is a change of plans, and now they will see the plan through to the end. Tower unveils his plan to regain Petch's trust and scam the remaining 2 million bot. He asks the teacher to initiate the first step by informing Petch of a change in plans. The check will now be sent to her, and he can collect it directly from her. Some time later, Petch meets teacher, who coyly suggests retrieving the check later that night, hinting at potential intimacy. Just then, Tower arrives in a sleek Ferrari, introduced by teacher as a supercar seller and owner of a prominent rice mill. Teacher elaborates on Tower's role in advising her company on rice for their new beer formula, boasting superiority over Chang beer. Eager to impress, Petch eagerly accepts Tower's offer of a ride in the Ferrari. As they speed towards the rice mill, Tower and Petch play around with the Ferrari's speed limit. At the rented rice mill, they unveil their next scheme, convincing Petch to invest in a get-rich-quick scheme involving the sale of sports cars. The asking price for the sports car is 4 million baht, with Tower and Teacher proposing Petch to contribute 2 million baht. Utilizing the 1 million baht previously scammed from Petch, and another 1 million baht from the yet-to-be-delivered cashier's check, they aim to seal the deal and fleece Petch once more. As in a heads to the bank to exchange the check for 1 million baht cash, a staged photo shoot for the sports car unfolds at the rice mill. As Petch begins looking at the car, Tower and Teacher begin their master plan. The two talk, and the teacher expresses interest in purchasing the sports car, but she apparently lacks hard cash for it. Tower, in front of Petch, offers to sell the car to Teacher for 4 million baht, a significant discount from its retail price of 6 million baht, promising her a profit of 2 million baht. However, Tower imposes a condition. The full 4 million baht must be paid in cash that day. Teacher, pretending to be in a dire situation, then proposes to Petch to invest 2 million baht each in purchasing the sports car together. However, Petch pretends to be against this idea, only to make Petch want it even more. After hearing a few pointed taunts from Tower, an angry Petch agrees to the investment, and assures them that he will make sure the money is all deposited that very day. Teacher emphasizes that her sole motive is to impress her company partner, downplaying any personal gain from the profits of the transaction. Petch quickly calls his sugar mommy to borrow some money. Despite his efforts to secure the necessary funds, his sugar mommy informs him that she lacks the resources, having recently gifted him a BMW. This rejection compounds Petch's frustration as he grapples with the realization that his financial options have dwindled. Reluctantly, Petch confesses to Teacher, admitting his inability to meet the investment requirement for the sports car. Teacher's disappointment quickly morphs into anger, and she rebuffs Petch's excuses, withdrawing the promise of any further intimacy. With a curt dismissal, Teacher and Tower depart, leaving Petch behind to contemplate. As Petch drives away from the rice mill, his thoughts are consumed by a growing sense of unease. His phone suddenly buzzes to life, signaling an incoming call from Sam. However, the conversation takes an unexpected turn as Sam reveals that he had not sent the earlier text message regarding the seminar, or the appointment of a replacement salesman. Bewildered and suspicious, Petch begins to piece together the unsettling realization that he's been ensnared in a meticulously orchestrated scam. As realization slowly dawns, he discreetly tails Tower, and teacher, eventually catching sight of and adjoining them after her visit to the bank. Determined to uncover the truth, Petch contacts the bank once more, only to learn that the check has been cancelled, confirming his suspicions. Realizing the extent of the deception, Petch tails the group to a restaurant, observing them split up into separate rooms. Entering the room where Anna sits alone, Petch confronts her, exposing his knowledge of the scam. In a candid confession, Petch admits to deceiving Anna for financial gain, revealing his own desperate circumstances. He apologizes, and says that he just wants to make it all up to her. It is amazing how quickly people change when their interests, 
are at stake. Seeking an alliance, Petch proposes that they betray the group together, allowing them to keep the ill-gotten gains for themselves. Though conflicted, Anna remains silent, contemplating whether to choose loyalty to her friends or the allure of financial security. Taking a calculated risk, Petch contacts Teacher, feigning compliance and claiming he has obtained the funds for the sports car. After withdrawing the money from his own bank account, Petch meets Teacher and Tower at the restaurant, handing over the cash as agreed. As Petch departs, Tower entrusts the money to Inna for distribution, believing her to be loyal to the group. Soon after, Inna is entrusted with the money, and she carries it out. We see her as she joins Petch outside with the money bag in hand. The boy takes the bag and puts it inside his car. Before the woman can sit, he locks the car and begins taunting her for trusting him. As he smiles widely in victory, Inna makes sure to crush it for good. As she should. Inna reveals that she didn't fall for Petch's ploy this time. Instead, she was part of the plan all along, having anticipated his betrayal. We then rewind to an earlier conversation between Inna and Tower, where Inna persuades Tower to involve her in the scam. She argues that Petch wouldn't trust the group without her participation, given his self-serving nature. Thus, the plan hinges on making Petch realize that he is being scammed, and then convincing Petch that Inna will betray the group, manipulating his blind trust to their advantage. Further revelations unfold as we discover Tower's pivotal role in orchestrating key events. It was Tower who asked Sam to call Petch and make him realize that he is being lied to. Back to the present, we see Petch's confrontation with Inay, where he discovers the money has been replaced with funeral funds. His woes deepen as he receives a call from his sugar mommy, who not only terminates his employment, but also ends their relationship. Inay's calculated move to expose Petch's true intentions by sharing his voice recording about playing with his sugar mommy seals his downfall. With the successful execution of the scam, the group splits their cut and disperses, each going their separate ways. Before Inna and Tower part, Inna makes sure to give him the personal contract that she had created which vowed that he would not use his skills for scamming others from now on. He smiles and secures the contract inside his jacket. The two want to say something to each other, but no words come up. Sadly, these two foolish peeps in love have a bittersweet parting. After driving away, Tower notices that his brother has eloped with his money too. As he is putting the files away, he sees the backside of the contract, wherein it has secretly written her desire to get to know Tower if he complies with the no-scam policy. Time passes as Anna gets busy in her life. She resumes her job at the bank, where she coincidentally discovers that Tower still owes the bank 1 million baht for using his car as collateral during the scam. Mustering up her courage, Anna decides to reach out to Tower, who has transitioned to an honest profession running a tour company. After reminding him of his overdue loan, Inna asks if he wants to inquire about anything else. After a pause, the man affirms. He then asks if she has a boyfriend yet. The man finally admits his feelings for Inna as the movie ends. Finally, 